Now I did say that before I went I would just quickly show you regional edits in LightZone. In, in this particular image I didn't use them, but since I'm here in LightZone and I don't know when I'll be back next in LightZone and showing you it on the show, I did just want to quickly show you something. So let's just say, for example, that I want to do some work particularly on that castle. So let's go, um, let's just zoom in a couple of steps uh, and zoom in on that castle. Okay, and I'm going to just sort of drag this over so that I'm just looking at the castle. There we go. Now let's say I'm looking at the tones, because it's zoomed in a little view here as well, I can find the brightest tones in the castle, which are around about there, and I can find the darkest tones in the castle, which are around about there. So we've got our darkest tones here and our brightest tones sort of here, and I could, if I wanted to, darken those dark tones down and maybe lighten those light tones up a little bit and then I probably want to grab one of the middle tones and just darken it a little bit more that's just going to give us a little more detail now the reason I'm working in zoomed in like this is so that you can't see what it's doing to the rest of the image if I turn this layer on and off we can see that it's, it's, it's building out some of the detail in this castle but if I go back to um, the fit to view it's also going to be affecting the rest of the image uh, in ways that I don't want it to so it's it's also worked on all this ground down here, and I don't particularly like that. And once again, we've lost some of the definition in those clouds in the sky. So I could now apply just those changes just to the castle. So if I choose this tool and start just drawing around the edge of the castle, I only need to do this roughly. I don't need to do this precisely. And then when I'm done, I can just right-click and... Uh, that's the point I don't need. Now, what's happening now, because I've made a region, let's turn this on and off and see what's actually happening. It's just affecting that castle. It's just affecting the bit region inside. And I can also drag in and out. And what this is doing is because I've defined a multi-point region here and it's all editable, I can click and drag these points around. It's got a feathering region around, uh, uh, around that region. Um, and I, I can click and drag on that that inner line and that changes the size of the feather so I can pull those points out so that it, the, the feathering goes along the edges of the castle nicely and obviously you can spend a long time with these with these masks but I have found in light zone usually you actually don't want to make your masks too precise you actually kind of want to rely on the feathering which does a very very nice job in light zone the feathering works really beautifully and these edits can quite often be um, very very unnoticeable if you do the if you do the edits the masks nicely so uh, we also have an option here to invert the mask and I can if I tick that on you can see that the edit disappears off the castle there uh, and edits the rest uh, and affects the rest of the image but in this case I do want just just the castle to be affected so let's um, let's go back to our standard mode so we get rid of the the view of our uh, of our um, uh, selective edit um, and just turn that layer on and off and see what it's doing and we can see that is just affecting the detail on the castle so that's that's doing a pretty nice job just of bringing some of that detail in and I think uh, you know that that's a, an excellent way of, um, uh, of of working on just sections of the image if you've got a region that's that's maybe too bright you can sometimes dim it down with a zone mapper and just affect that bit of the uh, bit of the image and uh, it, it, it does give you a, a level of control that isn't available in Lightroom 1 so um, in this case I think I'm going to leave just a little bit of that in because actually I think that that edit's turned out quite nicely. This isn't something I did in the original version of this image, but there you are. I think in this case it has actually it has actually added a little something. So I'm going to set the tool opacity there to about 50% and just leave that on there. So that's us done in Lightroom, uh, in Light Zone rather. We're now going to take this image, which, as I say, has still got some things that need doing. We need to affect the sky, we need to affect the ground, and we need to just really boost the last of the contrast up and bring out those 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 beautiful light golden tones that we that we had in the ground there. Um, so, having done with that, we can click the done button right here, and that's going to save that back to Lightroom. And remember, what's going to happen here when we go back to Lightroom is that it is going to um, take the image that it created, the TIFF that it created and open in Light Zone and it's going to stack it with the um, with the version that was already in Lightroom.
CR2 RAW file and it will make this new version the top version in that stack. Okay, so here we are back in uh, Lightroom now. We've got the version of the image that we had uh, just produced out of Lightzone. And as you can see now at the bottom here, we've got one of two and two of two. That means these two images are in a stack. And as you can see, one of two is the one that we've just created. So this is this is now the, uh, the TIFF that we're working on. So if I now go to the Develop view, and uh, we can close down this, this bottom film strip at the bottom here. We don't need that. I like to like to keep as much screen real estate as possible. Um, and we can see that by default all of these settings are, are sort of zeroed and, and uh, set to the middle because we're now working on a TIFF. We're not working on a RAW file. We're, so what we're doing now is, is relative changes relative to the data that came in at the TIFF. Uh, this is still a 16-bit image and it's still Pro Photo RGB so we've still got loads and loads of data. We've not thrown much away from the RAW at all. Um, we're still working in a very large image, which is going to take a lot of memory t and a lot of processing power to work with. Um, now, I'm going to just sort of quickly do some very basic um, edits here, just to just to try and get us up to a sort of a decent starting point. Just a little bit of fill like that, just dragging the fill light slider up and down. You can see what that's doing is it is affecting their ground area a lot. Just going to do just another little tweak, just to just to bring a little bit more light into the ground. Uh, remember that clarity slider I was talking about? Here it is in Lightroom, and if I put it all the way up to maximum, as you can see, it's a very similar effect to that detail slider in um, uh, in Lightzone, but but not nearly as strong. And uh, we do get on on the high end of the clarity slider what looks like just a little bit of haloing along the top of top of the castle. Let me watch watch the edges of the castle there as I drag that clarity slider up and down. You can see it does darken the interior edges of the castle. It, it's a very very useful slider. I mean just uh, certainly it, you know in, in certain uh, landscape shots you can just bring a little bit of detail back in and it, and it enhances detail beautifully. In this case um, I don't think we want to play with the clarity slider. We did quite a lot of that work in light zone so we'll leave that alone just for now. Uh, what we do want though is to work on the colour and in order to do that I'm going to use the vibrance and the saturation sliders. Now um, these two both boost colour. Let me just drag that all the way up. You can see that really boosts the colour up and if I drag that back down to zero uh, oops that was setting the rating to zero. Let me <laughs> click in, this, in the vibrance thing and set that back to zero. And do saturation and you can see this does a very similar thing. Now there is a very important difference between the vibrance and the saturation slider. The saturation will just push the um, the color values up um, regardless of what that then does to clipping. Um, the vibrance will not. So if you've got for example um, an image that has got a, a very strong color in it, so imagine some some red flowers or something uh, and you want to increase the vibrance of the color but you don't want to push the the red channel beyond the point where it starts to clip and you start to lose detail in that red channel what you need is the vibrant slider instead of the saturation slider and usually in most images unless it's an image like that with with uh, some with a channel that's going to start clipping before the others usually it doesn't make a huge difference which you use i like to use a little bit of both they 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 both seem to have uh, a different effect on the image so uh, what i'm going to do here is is just um, sort of ease them up together a little bit and just sort of uh, um, I think I'm looking for a, quite a high colour. I can always drag this back down again later. So somewhere in that region I would say for our um, for our vibrance and saturation. Now once again this is another one of those occasions where courage of your convictions um, it looks to my eyes even now, even doing it now it looks overly strong color wise and I, I know I can drag it back down later so I'm going to have the courage of my convictions I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to go on and do the color work that I, that I know I need to do and I'm going to go down here and, and if in 10 minutes time I still think it looks too strong I'll go back and I'll drag it back down but I need to just sort of let my let my eyes you know learn to live with it for a minute or two <laughs> Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. 
Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photo